Hey. Hey. How are you doing, channel? Uh, I am Tycho Brahe, Penarcade, Pax. It's true. Uh, Gaze ye upon my works in despair. Um, I'm also Jerry Holkins, Omendron. Sometimes. Uh, in, um, occasionally, very occasionally. Omendron, CEO of Acquisitions Incorporated. I am joined by uh, Eric Benson. The very uh, sweaty. The, yeah, the moistened. The moistened. Eric the moist. I've been working no. for you, channel, for <laughs> no, an no, hour. It's true. He has been hauling shit from hell to breakfast around, uh, around the studio. Um, but it is all toward uh, a very specific purpose. Mm. And that is to find out more uh, about the art of brewing, uh, specifically here on Acquisitions Intoxicated, um, how to make <laughs> cool beers that are themed after characters from the show. Um, and the fact of the matter is, War Priest, the very first collaboration between us uh, and yourselves in the channel, is ready to take a look at if you want to see it. Yeah. Gonna, let me scoot this bad boy over here. I'll grab these grains. And then this right here, let me move it away from the overlay. Now, this is War Priest. Yeah. Ready to basically, I mean, we want to condition it for another week or so. Week or so, yeah. We've pulled it off of the yeast cake. The trub. Trub, as they say. In the industry. Exactly. Yeah. So we're talking, briefly describe for the <laughs> audience um, the nature of trub. I don't really know if they want to hear it. So, um, listen, some, listen, sometimes the ends justify the means. And um, yeah. so let's talk to you about some of the ends we go through to transform wheat sugars into alcohol. Right. So what's, what's interesting, the first phase of, of fermentation is our primary Right. fermentation phase. Exactly. So That's you when the yeast go to work. Exactly. And so that is what we were um, creating, mm -hmm. catalyzing on the stream last time. You could look back here, see the water, see the hot water hitting the grains, extracting all that goodness, and then depositing it uh, you know, down in our fermentation tank. Right. And your, your primary fermentation takes about seven days on average for an ale. Yeah, yeah. Um, based on the original gravity? Based on the original gravity, based on what type of ale you're brewing. Um, some take, can take as long as two weeks, three weeks, a month. It just depends on what you're going to be brewing. Yeah, yeah. One of our favorites, one of our favorite beers in town here is from Lucky Envelope. Oh, yeah. Uh, the uh, ENIAC, like that award-winning IPA they have. I mean, yeah. it's one of the best in town easily. That's a four-week fermentation. Yeah. Yeah. And War Priest will be about close to the same. We're going to have about one week of fermentation and then two weeks of primary or secondary fermentation. Exactly. No. So, so you can see it every now and then, uh, since it got stirred up, every now and then you'll see this little hat in here, uh, inside this valve, you'll see this sort of pop up and you'll see gas be released basically. Right. And that's just the, that's just our tiny servants going, here in this liquid going crazy going on these crazy. sugars. Yeah, so what, um, what you'll see during primary fermentation is all of the nutrients, all of the um, everything that's left over from the yeast eating the sugar. The exhaust. Yes. Get, right. oh, 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 cicada. Thank you so much. Um, gets sent down, to, just dropped down to the bottom of the fermenter, and it's what we call trub. It's all, mm -hmm. pr it's proteins, it's stuff that doesn't, it won't work in the beer anymore. It's not beer. It's, the it's main not thing, be fermented The anymore. main thing we're talking about is that it is not beer. Yeah. Right. Um, so, you know, that's, trub is just the waste, the byproduct of the yeast mm -hmm. go, uh, eating through all that, those sugars. Exactly. So here in the secondary fermentation... And it smells horrible. It, oh, it's not good. It smells like a baby's diaper. It's it, that's, bad. That's it's not bad what we're looking news. for. The texture, I assume, is similar as well. Yeah. Um, so here in the secondary fermentation tank, now my correct... Uh, is the correct term for the secondary fermentation tank a bright tank? Um, you, yeah, it, it can be it called a bright tank. So it, at a brewery, what happens yeah. is... They have conical fermenters. You can actually get conical fermenters at your homebrew store now because, you know, we're nerds and we like to expand, you know, oh, our, oh, oh. our equipment as much so as is possible. So that, is that that shape that you see? Like, if you yeah. look at that giant yep. industrial-sized fermenter, that's a conical fermenter? Yep. that's okay. a conical fermenter. So what happens is all the trub gathers down at the bottom. Yeah. There is a valve at the bottom that you just open up and the seal trub it. drops out. And oh. then you seal it back up. Yeah, because they can't like siphon off the top of no, you know be, hundreds of gallons. It'd be point it'd be it'd be a ridiculous yeah, step. So they get rid of it there. And and then it's secondary fermentation. So after their secondary fermentation is done, 
it'll get transferred into a bright tank, yeah. meaning they're going to uh, make it cold. They're going to bring it down to probably about, you know, anywhere in 30 to 40 degree range. Is that the crash? Yeah, that's a cold, you can cold crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which drops a ton of the proteins out of suspension and clarifies your mm -hmm. beer. And then at the same, after that's done, after it's been dropped down to that temperature, then they carbonate it right in that bright tank. Oh, okay. Same tank. Yep. And then boom, right into the kegs. Nice, nice. So the, the main thing I want to uh, communicate, so if I'm looking over at the screen, mm -hmm. this looks pretty dark. Yeah. This looks pretty foreboding. Oh, yeah. Here in the real world, the color is not dark black yeah. in any way, shape, or form. No. And that's only because we had to, you know, we put our original keg, the primary downstairs in the yeah. cellar. We had to bring it up, which shook it up a little bit and got some of the trub yeah. floating back into the beer. So this will actually, over the next week, it'll settle out and become that same dark color. Exactly. But, oh, okay, so it, oh, so it actually will darken. Yeah. Okay, because right now it's the color of, I would say, like chocolate milk or mm -hmm. dark tea. Mm -hmm. It's not, it is not dark black in any way. No, it's because you have a... Uh, a lot of oh, sediment. It's just being there. made opaque by that. It's actually mm -hmm. catching more light. Okay, cool. Yep. I, I didn't know if we had. Uh, I didn't know if it was actually just different than we had thought from our, from our plan. Nope. It's like had Beersmith turned us turned, wrong. Yeah, ha has it gone by the wayside? But no, I mean, you can see by the pictures of the trial brew. Yes. From home, uh, it was the perfect color. Yeah, exactly. So, right. and, and that was a little easier because my ferment, my fermenters are right next to each other at home. So oh, it was sure. literally just transfer into the secondary yeah so uh, there wasn't that splashing around of going upstairs it might be fun it might be fun if you kicked out a few just to the tweet mm -hmm. if you kicked out a few shots of, of of the home setup yeah because i mean my my suspicion um and i'm no i'm no prophet <laughs> but my suspicion is that watching this process done mm -hmm. is going to be something that gets people into it as a hobby. Yeah. So they might want to have a chance to see what a home setup yeah, absolutely. looks like. It might be built around an appliance. Right. But not necessarily. No. I mean, that's, you've been brewing for years without the assistance of an Arduino uh, solution. I know, right. Right? I don't know how you survived. Trust me, I don't, I don't want to go back. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. Is like I was always like, "Hey, man, thanks for doing the test brews. I'm sure the channel is really going to appreciate that." Yeah. And you're just like, for you, the novelty factor is just massive. Yeah. Right? I'm just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I sit back, I put that on, and then I go back to, I go right. Yeah. And then I come back when it needs something, and then yeah. I go right. It'll beep later. <laughs> yeah. And it'll amazing. be good. Yeah. So there's a couple things we should run through for the stream. Yeah. Um, vis a vis. So the process they got to see was the primary malt extraction, mm -hmm. and they saw it going to work back there. Yeah. Let's talk about the things that they didn't have a chance to see after we came through and finalized everything. Right, absolutely. So we, after the um, boil was done, we then started with the classic ice bath. That's the easiest way to chill your, exactly. your beer down the temperature. And that took about 40 minutes to do with the Pico. Right. Just changing the ice and then just keeping the keg cold as it was cycling. Exactly. But what I went and did was I built a modification that lets us use what's called a plate chiller. This is rad. This is the best 99 bucks you can spend your money on in brewing. But it'll probably cost you more because you need pumps and all this other stuff. But yeah, yeah. 99 bucks for this. So what this does is there are copper plates inside of here. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like it might be hard to see on the yeah. stream itself just because of the limitations of human resolution. But if you look at it like this, it's just a cake. It's like a, a tiramisu made out of copper, yeah. basically, right? Yeah. And what happens is you put there's two uh, there's a wart in and a wart out. So what, once this is done. Um, once we've done heating up, or we're done heating up the wart, we'll send it through these copper plates, and it'll go in one side, come out the other. There's another port for w cold water in and cold water out. Yeah. So what's even faster? Yeah. What's actually happening is on one side of the copper plate is cold water rushing through, and on the other side is hot beer, or hot wart rushing yeah. through, and the cold water and the copper is sucking the heat right out of the wart as it runs through this little It's a mech device. warrior style heat sink, um, but for brewing. Exactly. And instead of 40 minutes, it'll take us six minutes to cool down. Once it goes through this little thing, it drops from 200 and 
uh, seven degrees all the way down to 70 degrees. Good Christ. Yeah. That's how awesome copper and science is. Yeah. Behold. 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 Now, uh, so, but basically, once we got it chilled down, mm -hmm. uh, we took the top off. Uh, last time you saw us grab the uh, smack packs. Mm -hmm. So we had our, we had a couple hundred billion cells of yeast uh, ready to go inside there. The bags were taut yes. with their activity. We poured those in, sealed it up, put uh, a device very much like this right on top of it. Uh, so that, because you've heard the stories about homebrew, uh, there, there's, there's a commonality between meth labs <laughs> and homebrew outfits. Yeah. Which is that occasionally destruction is the result. Yeah, and warn your neighbors because they might think you're <laughs> making exactly. drugs in your backyard. Yeah, exactly. But uh, it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. If you if you keep a sterile, you know, a, a situation like this, a sterile scenario for the carbon dioxide to escape, explosions come down to a minimum. Yeah. Right. And so then once it was in there, I, I brought I literally brought it down. Obviously, I made sure the warehouse knew what I was yeah, doing. Yeah, what was going on? Why exactly. is there those objects in the back? Exactly. Yeah. But I placed it back in the corner. And then every now and then, this is the first part that is exciting for you if you are approaching this hobby, is that you can go down. And as I said, if you watch this every now and then, you'll see you'll see the activity of it. Um, you can go down that first couple days and it'll be going nuts, basically, mm -hmm. because basically it's a yeast buffet. Yeah. Right? This is what they're into. Yeah. It's what they want to be about. It, it's, 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 it, all the little yeast have a machine gun that they're, they're really going rapid oh, on this no, thing. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's, a war, it's a war zone in there. It's a wart zone. Yeah, a wart zone. Oh. Only here on Acquisitions Intoxicated. Now, listen. Oh, so, uh, now why don't you tell everybody what this device is? Because this will give us a chance to talk about original gravity, too. Yeah, so this is really cool. This is a hydrometer. This is essentially how we determine AB. Hey, Master Cram. Master Cram, thanks, man. Uh, this is how we get to determine ABV. Now, what is uh, a gr what is gravity in this context? <laughs> ABV is obviously the alcohol content. Right. Gravity is going to show us. Gravity uh, basically tells us how, how much sugars are still left in in the in the suspension. In suspension. Yeah. So with this is what was pretty amazing about this brew was our starting gravity was around 1.08. Yeah. Because it's a thick, heavy heavy beer that's going to really hit you in the face. Right. Um, so War Priest, I War mean, Priest. should definitely, it's on brand. It's, it's totally, it's completely on brand. Right. Um, so what you would do to use a hydrometer is you'd put some of your uh, fermenting beer in there, spin the hydrometer, and then g you look down into the meniscus, Meniscus is a gross word, and you know that. It's fantastic, and you love it. And you can get get down, man, get down, yeah, where 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 it dips. Exactly. And then you can read the number. Exactly. So this would be. You tell me if I'm right. This is about one point oh two, oh three. Yeah. Yeah. So in a matter of a week, we came down close. You know, seventy. What seventy seven points. On that scale, which is huge. Well, yeah, yeah. So, so, we, so and and you can tell when you smell it that this is this has gone to a new place. This is not what we were boiling. No. On the show last week. No, I actually got a whiff of the fermenter, and it smells. It just smelled utterly delicious. Oh no! I mean that that's the fact. And yeah. so, obviously, it needs more time to rest. Yeah, we'll give it about you know one to two more weeks. And exactly. That's about it. But that doesn't mean that we can't get a sense of where it's at right now. Yeah. From the hydrometer, if we want to. Yeah, go take here. Check right. this out. Take a sip. It's going to be grainy, <laughs> but you're going to get a lot of the flavors. But yeah, but we'll know. We'll know if we're. Oh my gosh. It's good. I haven't had. A, I haven't had a sample yet, so. It's really good. Like this is exactly what I want. Now, obviously, it's sort of like cellar temp. Yeah. It's not, it's not cold. carbonated. Like, it isn't carbonated. It's not cold like we would have it. Right. But this is, I mean, imagine, so when we go and write the C team, mm -hmm. imagine that they had this. Imagine that they had I'm so this, excited for this beer. at Jolly Roger. Yeah. Right? Whoa. If they brought this to us, if they brought this fucking to us at the table, we would be over fucking joyed. Oh my god, like if we got that it, is I'd, delicious. No, no, for real. If, we, if it came, I'd be like, man, someone cool must have made <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? 
It's like it's Pro like what Brewer's Smith. There. Yeah, what Smith <laughs> could have wrought this liquid here? I am. So like I say, so uh, this is the main thing I'm communicating, right? Yeah, we so, rule. So stream, you rule. Right? That, that's what I'm saying. Salt, I'm sorry. Listen. Oh yeah, Malagrin. This is 100% war priest, right? So again, cellar temp, so mm -hmm. it's not it's not cold no. and it's not carbonated, but we can tell a lot from this. Oh yeah. Right? This is just the preview. The fact of the matter is after another week it's going to get conditioning, better. It's going to be even better. Even better. Well, it'll be more of it'll be more itself. Yeah. Right? Whatever is in here, it's going to be more of. Let's see. I am so happy with this turnout right now. Yeah, f figure out those flavors in there cuz there's a lot going on. But I want to drink it all. <laughs> I can't I can't fucking believe this. This rad, right? Okay, so now it's we just have to accept a couple things, right? Let's just take a look at the whole context we've created here. We're in a, a Twitch streaming studio. We're making beer about Dungeons and Dragons shit. Let's just yeah, let's, let's yeah. just accept that we are nerds. Okay? Let's just let's just accept. Let's embrace one another. Yeah. Let's embrace one another inside the stream family, right? right. We every it's all okay in here. We're gonna figure some shit out together. So I'm gonna tell you the stuff that is from this. You should take a sip of it again so you can try to figure out some more of the words. This is <laughs> this is what we're talking about, and I'm not making a joke at all. We are talking about oh, it's so good caramel chocolate coffee. Mm -hmm. But that's that's the situation, and understand that this was manufactured from a design perspective, in a completely collaborative way, the choices that, that you made, I mean, this is like four, you have the bill there? Yeah. It's like um, four grains. So here, so let's, let's, go, let's go back in. Yeah. Can, can we throw the, the recipe field up on the main screen, Josh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 do your shit. Do your shit. Uh, Cranman, salted caramel is not is not that far off, yeah. okay? So somebody had a question, is this a porter, is it a stout? It is not. And that's one of the things that makes it so novel, Yeah. right? Because it has the high notes that a beverage like that is not gonna have. Uh, thanks, Firehawk. Um, this is a black IPA, which over, so they call them black IPAs on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. over, over this way in the Northwest, we, we sometimes call them Cascadian dark ales. Yep. Um, but basically we're talking about uh, an IPA yep. style beer, but with the incorporation of some roasted malts. In this case, chocolate. Uh, no, well, we did carafa, which is oh, right. is going to give which give us that really dark color, but a little bit of roast. And we also used Maris Otter as a, as a, one of our base malts, right? Which is going to give us more of that. Um, coffee flavor, exactly. a, little, a little more it's of that oaty flavor. The nut, exactly. Yeah. It's the nut aspect. Yeah. So we're talking about something that is like raising a pitchfork like at the border of candy. Yeah. And demanding entrance. Like this is, I'm going to have some more. Yeah. I don't even give a shit. It smells like candy. Yeah. It's going to be delicious. And that, and then... You know, think about the no, no, you know, it is no, no. There. It smells like this is like nice candy. Like, let's say you fucked up, <laughs> and you bring candy mm -hmm. as a result, as a make good. That's the thing because it has the high note. Yeah, you get the salted caramel weirdness. Right, but the but when it's done, it's just cocoa. Yeah, welcome to a black IPA. Jesus Christ. Okay, so uh, that is. I could not possibly be more pleased with that. Thank you so much. Excellent work. Um, obviously, long term, we need to figure out uh, how to get as much of this out there mm. uh, as we can. We'll try to figure out uh, what the event type scenario is. Yeah. Um, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. The main thing to file away now is that you did a great job. Um, and uh, we will act as your mouth avatars uh, here in the studio for that purpose. So this is ready to roll. Yeah. We're not putting that back in. No, God, no. It's got, it's got mouths on it's it. Got, it's got our germs on it. Exactly. That, nobody wants that. <clears throat> yeah, so toss that back there. Um, so, but that's the, that's the recipe right there. Obviously, uh, I talked with the engineer about making sure you can get a hold of these recipes and make them. So this is one of the other things that I really like 
about brewing is that we put this together, um, and even if we did own it, like mm -hmm. in some sense, we don't own it in any of the ways that are important. Like, well, you know, that's what's really cool about brewing is uh, most people that brew love to share their recipes. Exactly, because um, they're they're proud of them. Like they they are they are contributing. Yeah. Like person by person, like they are actually contributing to a heritage. Well, a heritage, we... exactly, a human form. Yeah. Right, and this is something that we are putting together. So, that recipe, and like I said, we'll we'll kick out the versions that you can use at home if you're if you're just starting out. Um, this might be an interesting way to go, but the main thing is that is that we made it together, and you can reproduce this. This is a science thing. Yeah, you can reproduce. You can have all the experiences that we just had. You can make this with your friends at home. I would say yeah. that. I would say that the. The parallels between this and D and D are actually really strong. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not considered that at first. Gather the party and then <laughs> quest. <laughs> go, this is your quest. Yeah, it's a yeast quest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Hey, so what's so next? Is it time to is it time I, to make a? I think it's time to velvet cape. Make some velvet cape. But as you know, mm -hmm. yep, before, there's, there's a ritual. There's, there's a, a ritual. ritual. First rule of home brewing is sit back and have a home brew. But indeed, indeed. We're still waiting for our home brew to be done. Exactly. So we have some surrogates. Uh, on want, the way. So this is Ninkazi's Total Domination, right? Yep. You want to talk about this? this I do, a... I do. So Total Domination is uh, an IPA from Ninkazi out of Eugene, Oregon. Uh, south, just a few scant hours from here. Um, I, tend to, I tend to like Ninkazi beverages in general. I think They've always done really good. I think that their, their red is pretty good. Uh, I definitely do not turn down these beverages uh, when they are offered to me. So let me grab the uh, case. Yep, get the case And then out. we can start throwing in our stuff. You bet. And th there's going to be some interesting uh, divergences from the old one, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, because it's a German-style beer, mm -hmm. like when hops are getting added and what purpose they're being added for exactly. are not the same not as an American IPA yeah. at all. And we'll go, we can go through that as we... Oh, uh, we will indeed. Actually, here. Um, hey, Josh. Yeah. Can you come here for a sec? You just want another sip, don't you? Well, no, I just want to drink it. I just want to drink it some more. Here. You sip. Don't, don't be mad. You're going to love it. It smells good. It smells really, really good. good. But I'm saying, like, I want to make sure... We're just... The, not, like, we're just sip. not overhyping it on our own. A sip. A sip, Josh. <laughs> good God. I can see this show is already going to be a problem. Adam, sip. Wait, exactly. exactly. Here. here <laughs> so, 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 so go back and, and, and give them the review from someone who is not on stage trying to put this shit together. And delicious. Yes, yeah, see, exactly <laughs> right. I love it. Exactly fucking right. Now, now I drink beer. I just don't drink it super often. Mm -hmm. But when I do, <laughs> but I actually love beer. Well, right. yeah. Listen, you work at the right place, then, Josh, because. <laughs> We're about to have gallons, gallons and gallons and of this gallons shit. Gallons of beer. All right, man. All right, so check it out. Those are the grains. How, get so, a whiff. I will here. So why don't you go into it? Yeah. So pull up Velvet Cape, and then let let the people know. All right. So remember last week, guys, we did. This is a. Um, we want to have. Um, 50, there's, 50%, there's laws. Yeah, yeah. There's some laws, rules, and regulations here, but fifty percent of it should be at least uh, wheat, which yeah. we did. So we have about four pounds of wheat, one pound of Victory malt, which is going to give us a really cool biscuity flavor. Right. Exactly. This. So if you're not familiar with this style of beer, um, you are in for a treat. Like I envy you, because this uh, a Dunkelweizen doesn't taste. Doesn't taste like I would say that it doesn't taste like beer. No, uh, I would say that I would say that that's characterizes especially if you're used to like if you're you start at Budweiser and then you start moving into craft. Right. Our the direction that we went, it's it, it's like heavy metal. Yeah. Like the way that heavy metal moves to different yeah, places. Yeah, 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 yeah. The way that we went is aggressive. 
<laughs> yeah, we didn't we didn't dip our toes in the water. We just kind of jumped into the no, deep end really this quick. This tastes like these are like elixirs. Yeah, these, these they fortify men and women to accomplish great feats you, you, or survive the winter. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. This is you know, this is food. Yeah. Basically. And and they're not a hoppy beer. It's all uh, you know, it's malt forward. Exactly, but that's that's the key. That's the main thing I want to get across, right? Is that the where the hops come in. Well, mm -hmm. you know what? We'll, we'll get to the technique. Yeah. Here. Um, but first of all, we got to throw in. Greens? Oh man, Whew. that is real, real good. It's rich. Oh yeah. And it doesn't again, like just like War Priest, mm -hmm. it's not going to look dark. No. But after Foot. we get after we get done extracting all this goodness. Yeah, and you and you guys will see it on the stream, and if you saw it on my tweets from Sunday. It went through color gradations as it was going through the mash. Yeah, exactly. So if you're if you're curious about the rest of the process, because uh, Eric's been doing test brews, just so that we're sure that when we come uh, and talk to you on the show, that we are investing your time wisely. Uh, you can always catch up. I mean, I retweeted at, at Tycho Brahe on Twitter and uh, EJ Benson. Mm -hmm. You got it. Yep. So check out, this is what's super interesting too. Look at the oh my God, size oh. of the grains. <clears throat> sorry, I, I'm sorry, I was in the shot. Um, Josh, <laughs> I apologize. It blinded it's, out well, the no, camera no, with no. The... What happened, what happened, yeah, with my dome. <laughs> but no, is that when I, when I got it in there, yeah, it's, it's like it, it had rested in the bag, yeah. but once I got it in the mix, um, then just this cloud of, of sweet things. It, it just I, like hits you. Exactly. It was a plume. No, and I can't I can't express enough um, just how much human beings want this. Yeah. It's just there is something way, way down where if you have this little kernel that's full of sugar, like I was eating it, if you'll recall from the first yeah. episode, like I wasn't intending to, like and I wasn't doing it euphemistically and I wasn't doing it to entertain you at all. No. I was under the grip of some primal program. <laughs> That's what I need to eat this grain. I need to put as much of this in my craw as possible. Yeah, and then so, when you did, you, you couldn't stop. No, no, no I, it, I, I had props. Essentially, we should have just got some, you know, milk and made a cereal out of it. Exactly. No, I, I, honestly, I, I would eat. A++ would <laughs> eat again. I would eat all the time. Now, so, you go into the hop aspect. Because like I said last time, it was hops fucking go-go. Right. It was every one of these cages has hops. And so each of these cages, mm -hmm. in your mind, um, think about those as time of add, right? When you when you add these into the boil. At home, right. with your traditional setup, you'd be manually putting those Throwing into the them pot right into the boil. at specific times. Because, as we said last time, uh, the temperature that the wart is when you're adding this stuff, this is all really important. Mm -hmm. Hops are pretty fragile uh, plants. Oh yeah. And you know, if you're doing something right here, that's gonna be in the entire boil. Yep. And that's your bittering. That's that, you're gonna, when the longer right? you put a hop into that boil, right. the more bitter it's gonna add, bitterness it's gonna add to exactly. the beer. So this is what you need to keep in mind for this. Like mm -hmm. where do the hops start? Yep. In this one here. In this one here. In Velvet Cape. They'll start from the left. Yeah. We, we're, we only have two hop editions. <clears throat> but there's only two editions. And yep. when do they come in? We have one at the 60 minute and then one at a five minute. Because the, the last one is just for some aroma and not a lot of bitterness. That's the flame out, right? Uh, flame out's at zero. Okay, so there's some, some beers have that final yeah. edition. But, yeah. but, but you usually use those when you're doing IPAs, pale ales, where you want a lot of hop it has to, be bright to come off the nose. On the nose, right? right. But, but, that's a, but that's a super important thing. Until an hour, like until an hour has passed, mm -hmm. no hops get added to this boil at all. It is, it is, those hops are there, and this is what makes these beers distinct from the American style beers exactly. in general, is that it's a it's a substantial period of time before anything like that comes in, and you'll know that when you drink it. Oh yeah, because the texture, like the texture of drinking it, is nothing like a regular. Right. If it's nothing like the beers you're used to, if you're used to American style beers. Exactly. And if you look at this too, look at the grain bed. It's half the size of what War Priest was. No, War Priest, War Priest was, a was fucking almost monster, up to the top. dude. Hell yeah, it was. But it remember, was soaking in there. That's that War Priest is an eight percent beer. Yeah. JD's Velvet Cape, that's only it's only a five percent beer. Exactly. Or five and a, a third. Yeah, yeah, yeah five exactly. and a half. Yeah. But basically, you, but you're starting to see it, right? So you're you starting to get a sense of these these ratios and how they how they reflect on the final thing, right? 
So, right. so what's next? You're gonna measure out some hops? Yeah, grab those hops. Let's measure this out. All right, now, so let's see. So we use Tetanag. Yeah. Which is a classic hop. Yeah, exactly. So this is what they're telling me here. So Alpha 2.0. Yep. Right? And so compared to some of the ones we were using last time, yeah. they were like 14.8. Right. Super Again, so high bitter. High bitter, and that's what they were for. This is two. <laughs> yeah, we're not going for, this beer is not supposed to be bitter. Exactly, mild and pleasant with but, balanced earthy herbal and floral aroma. Yeah, what we want those hops to do is balance out the malt. Sweet. Yeah. Take a whiff. Tell me how, it, it's just absolutely delicious. Dank. Come get it. Oh yeah, that's amazing. Right. All right. But again, but <clears throat> what we're looking for, ah, Lord Zeris, uh, what we're looking for from these is just absolutely is just something to counsel mm -hmm. all the syrupy malts it's, in it's, here. These are the viziers to the exactly to, to exactly. They are, their purpose. Malts. Their purpose is to get in there and say, "Listen, you're going, you're going, <laughs> Your Highness, you're going a little crazy <laughs> now." Uh, how need, much of these? You need a half an ounce for the for the boil, for the 60 minute boil, yep. Okay. 0.5, now last time. You, you nailed it last time. I had time. incredible I values. I'm gonna scoot this right up here. I want, I, want, listen, I want to show the people what I'm capable of here. Don't drink, oh, oh, oh. Eh, eh, it's close enough. It's good enough. Uh, yeah, it's right, it's right on the, it's, you it's got the enough. five. Five oh two, you know five, what, it, yeah. it's like we have to, we have to, uh, we have to keep Measuring it down. Yeah, you know what it's like. It's it's like when you're going to pump gas. You, you want to like drop the drop the handle, like Bam. drop the mic. And yeah, then, exactly. There's a ritual. Yeah, and it must see, be retained. See if you can get it right on the dot. All right now, where's our five minute edition? All right, so the five minute edition is only going to be 0.25. Wow. So you might want to put it on the scale. Dude, just, listen. Yeah, you just, keep. I'm just, I'm just throwing this. You keep fucking knowledge with me. out to you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, but the. So got one shot. Don't fuck it up. There's no comparison. No. Could, do, in do, terms of the hopping to the war priest, there's absolutely no comparison. No, the, the war priest is girded for battle. Yeah, it is. Pre, it, it's we'll say preserved. Well, here, no, that's what hops do. They actually preserve the beer. That's what. That's why IPAs were IPA. Yeah, India Pale Ale. Right. Pale it's designed to the, maintain it. Yeah, while it was crossing the oceans, the hops were used as preservatives. And also the alcohol. Yeah. Pretty good. Two forty nine. Put another drop in. It can't hurt. Just one. There you go. Boo. Two sixty. Now it's all God. fucked up. <laughs> Dude, this is this. I'm gonna. This is gonna keep me up at night. <laughs> no, it's right. I found exactly the right hop. There you go. I'm it's, good with it's that. It's good enough. All right. If we taste it and it's too hoppy, that's on me. It won't be. Hop cage. Hop cage. Done. All right. Wow. So last time, again, four hop editions. Yeah, we were all I the mean, way through. We had all of these cages full last time. This mm -hmm. is just straight two because we're not really. The dog agrees. The dog is like, yes. He's like, yes, I love two hops. Dude, he, could be, he could be the dog of war. He could be. I had not considered that. Unleashed. So this motherfucker is ready to go. Yeah, pop it right in. We've already added the water into the kegging system. Okay. The hop gauntlet. Yeah, I agree. Brew a recipe. JD's velvet cape. Looks yep. like it's in there ready to roll. Yep. Give it a crank. Preparing for brew. Okay. All right, now. So, we, we had discussed it. <laughs> well, you're going to go back after the... <laughs> Dude, really you good. got a fucking problem, man. What? No, I don't. <laughs> You're going after hey, this. Hey, Josh has the problem. He pre drank half this, this thing. No, that's actually true. <laughs> there was there was definitely a Josh gulp. Now, I'm. Let me grab thrilled. the old laptop. Yep. So, like I say, you still you're still enjoying the novelty mm -hmm. of the device. Well, I'm just, ba I'm just enjoying you, all the bullshit that I don't have to do anymore. Well, right, and it lets you, it lets you clean it out. And I'm the, joking. The magic trick uh, of this device is probably, I mean, the best trick is probably that all the, the entire container here mm -hmm. can be placed in the dishwasher. Right, exactly. I mean, that's, I, I would say that's the sorcery aspect, right? Yep. Uh, yes, this is JD's Velvet Cape.
sort of what's going on with Velvet Cape, because every every ingredient in this beer mm -hmm. was created as a result of uh, Twitch polls and, yeah. and uh, conversations with you guys. Well, that, yeah, and, that, and that was really the best part about this was, you know, we said, okay, what's, when we look at Jim Dark Magic, what is, what is it? First, exactly. And we decided Dunkel Bison, and the wheat was- Because it's gotta be sweet. It's gotta be sweet. Right. But then it's gotta, it's gotta be, you know, it's gotta also be smooth, right? Yes. Smooth as silk. Absolutely. Um, so that's why we added uh, Victory Malt and the Munich Malts and the Crystal Malts to right. give it the color and that extra little flavor mm -hmm. of, you know, you we're coming, coming in sweet and smooth. And that's what, right. those, that's what those malts did. Exactly. Um, and then a traditional, more or less traditional Dunkelweizen hop uh, profile yeah. there in the back end. But, the weird note, <laughs> yes. the weird note, usually we would use a Bavarian uh, wheat yeast for this. Right. But we decided, the chat, which I thought was really cool, went and decided on a Belgian wheat instead. Right. Which is super interesting, because it's going to give us plum, apple, and it's going to be a little drier. Exactly. Uh, than its Bavarian cousin. Exactly. But, it's, but again, because there's going to be a lot of sort of unprocessed sugars in there, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a very interesting... There's actually going to be something to hang those fruity, yeah. like those sort of, I mean, legitimately novel yeah. uh, yeast uh, flavors. I'm super excited to see. I'm actually really glad that the um, stream chose the Belgian wheat because we I want to see it. Exactly. If we had done it, we probably would have done something a little more traditional, yeah. a little more straight up the lane. Yeah. Right? But, but the chat... The, the, we, chat, the, the chat, the chat went, spoke. Yeah, the chat spoke. We listened, and it's gonna. I think it's gonna taste really, really <coughs> exactly. good. Exactly. So. And actually, do you want to grab those smack packs? Too? Oh yeah, we got to work them, don't we? Yeah. And I did not smack them yeah. thoroughly enough last time. I don't. Yeah, think. You, you better give it a better smack this time. Well, it's like I didn't know. I didn't know if it was gonna be a situation where like yeast like ketchup, like it just. Fries. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I want. It was like I was going for like a good things come to those who wait. <laughs> yeah, no, no, beat the shit out of it. Oh God, you. Give me the other one. Give me the other. Jeez. Well, here you show me, and if I get covered with yeast. Okay, so you you want to get the packs down here. Yeah, right? yeah, deep. Put it in your hand. Really? I mean, you can almost hurt your eardrum with that. And then shake it. I'll even give it a you know a second smack if you want. Yeah, it's fulminating. Yeah, and you'll you'll hear the yeast uh, going to work with the nutrients. Okay, so now. we got some options today. Okay, now you smack that pack. Yeah. Yes, the council has decided the fate of the velvet cape. I love it. Okay, there is your pole, Josh. God, I love, I, I'm not gonna try and influence this one, but I know where I wanna go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we'll see what they think. Oh God, everybody's looking for, for Yari. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, Amy. Amy. yeah, Amy. Amy knows what's up. Amy knows what's up. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, here, I'm gonna let this run for a little while. Yeah, yeah. But basically, this, this gonna be it. exactly. But, I, I'm, but, I'm nerding out about doing a drawing courtier. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So in, in this case, here's the situation. Um, obviously, our parents have gone away for a week's vacation. In addition, they no, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. But I mean, here's here's what's up with these two. So my feeling is that we can make right on this stream, and it's gonna happen eventually. We're just gonna decide when it happens, right? It is 50-50, people. I love this. Oh, Viari is taking it in the pants. So, it's like this. Uh, what I'd like to do for Profit Drawn is to build, here on the stream with you, the beer that she makes... For the Drawn... For the Drawn and Courier. So there's a few things I that you it. should know. There's, there's, a, there's a few interesting facts that you might enjoy. <clears throat> the Belgian style, that sort of wild yeast, mm -hmm. those flavors... Um, Historically, traditionally, that would have been created via spontaneous fermentation, mm -hmm. right? So there's the idea of terroir, like in wine, how it affects the entire uh, flavor profile. Yeah. Those Belgian beers 
like my understanding is that the brew houses could open the roof. Well, that's what ha that's what would happen. They would open up the fermenter because it was yeah. just a giant vat. Right. And let the wild yeast in. And, 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 and let wild yeast from that region mm -hmm. come in. And that's why those profiles are so yeah. novel, even to this day. Yeah. So that is a, it was a super curatorial choice on the part of the stream. I love it. The other thing is that, is that the history of beer is actually pretty interesting. And there's contexts in which, like, brewing beer would have been considered women's work. Mm. Um, there'd be special beers, like, for um, mothers giving birth. Like there's this whole parallel history of brewing that is really fascinating if you dig into it. Yeah. Um, my feeling is that here on the stream, today or some other day, we can approach profit drawn as a um, as an artifact beer. Mm. So we've we've had different types of beers. War Priest is not really Omen Drawn's beer. No. He doesn't have War Priest like with him. That's a beer that's about Omen Drawn. In this case, for Profa, I want to make the beer that she makes right. in the Drawn and Courtier. So we're gonna come up with something that is unique and local to Red Larch. Yeah. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna consider the malt load, or the, the grain bill. There's a say. lot of cool ways, there's a lot of different ways we can go with that. And exactly. especially, as, you know, I was thinking about the other night as we were, you know, talking uh, C Team stuff, and I'm, I, uh, there, there are so many different aspects of all the stuff we've created for the Drawn and Courtier. Or that there we, should be, we, there could, should we, be could, we could make a beer for all these different ideas that we've come up with. <clears throat> now, Amy, we could put some cat hair yes. in the fermenter, which there almost certainly is in real life. Yes. Um, but yes, that would be an artifact beer. And then for Viari, obviously we can approach that either as a character beer mm. um, or we can approach it as something that he, you know, that, that he might like in world. Prof is drawn and quartered. <laughs> nice. Love it. Love it. Love it, business end. That's premium. Yeah. Uh, exactly, exactly. But anyways, that's the situation. It looks to me, uh, oh, channel, yeah. it looks to me like Profa Drawn uh, is a tough lady. And she was able to pull through here, I think. We will, we could do Viari next week. Absolutely. We could put it up for a vote. Absolutely. So we'll, we'll throw Viari in the mix next time. And then we'll have a second option as well. All right. I love it. All right. So let's get a new recipe cooking here. Uh-huh. Add recipe. Oh, uh, Phelan Sarno, you might be, you might be uh, curious to note, this, this Thursday, myself, uh, Eric, and the C-Team, uh, plus our friend Patrick Rothfuss, are all going to go out. Um, <laughs> They're going to take our walk, exactly. our Saturday walk. So we have a very specific Saturday walk. It involves a lot of local, small local breweries and food trucks. Um, but we're going to reveal that uh, to the team, yeah. basically. And it's like, this is when we're coming up with the C-team for you, like... This is what this we is, go This through. is our Saturday, right? Yeah. I mean, this is what we do on that day. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... So let's talk about the different kinds of beers that we could brew for the Drawn and Courtier. Exactly. Now, for me, the, f the, the, the first thing that comes to mind is something like a red ale. Right. Like, if it's going to be red larch... Right. Like Why it, would we not do a red ale? It seems, like, it seems like she would... Like, she's not above a little theater. Right. And I feel like, I feel like she would do a red ale. I agree. And that would be, like, the red larch beer. That, that would be... That's one option. Uh, I also look at it as... A, it's an old, you know, this is an old tavern. Yes. This is a tavern in the middle of, there's not much around, right? There, you have to travel to get things. Right. So you're going to work with what's around. <clears throat> yes, local. So when I, when I think of those old taverns, I think of either an amber ale or using a pale ale, which is going to be super flavorful. And Wait, So come, come at that distinction for the channel. Dist draw the distinction between an amber ale and a pale ale. Color? One's amber, one's no, I'm sure, sure. I'm joking. I'm joking. Is, is that just is that just grain bill? No, it's it, yeah, it's mostly grain bill, but also um, the hop build as well. So with a pale ale, this the way I look at it as um, a pale ale would be served with cornerstones. This is why I was thinking the other day, like, oh, there's so many directions so, we could go with. So this. I gave the impression before that we were in fact nerds, but there yeah. is a nerd hierarchy, and uh, E.J. Benson 
sits atop it like a throne. Mm. So you're so you want to make a beer that would go well with the imaginary food that, that we, we created. That we created. <laughs> All right, dork. So, hey, listen. No, I, we I love created you. the I food. Could, I could not me? love you more. I, I'm just saying that you're a nerd, and, and yeah. I'm I'm not mad at it. Welcome to the club. Yeah. So we could go that way because a pale ale will be lighter in flavor, would go with a cake, but also we could deliver a huge impact on f aroma and flavor at the end of the beer. So that's how a pale ale would work. Yeah, and so those tart, like the tart tangy notes would be good with the jam and the powdered sugar. Right, and then we could, we could play around with, with a pale ale, the world's your oyster this when it comes already, to hops. Josh, do you have a brew cam? Yeah. Of course. Josh fucking Price. Josh Price, everybody. Take a look at the take a look at the color. Yeah, you're gonna want to check out these colors because coming out at the base here. When dude. I was brewing it, it changes drastically throughout the process. Well, yeah. So what's it? What what malt is it hitting and getting that first color? I mean, that, that looks like grapefruit juice that, or something. That's basically the wheat. You're looking at just the the beginnings of the wheat coming off. So that's so that's where you're gonna you're dropping a pale ale or something like right. that. In that context, it's gonna have this brighter profile. Right. Exactly. So that's when, so that's why I said, you know, we could do a, a pale ale. An amber ale is going to be more malty, caramel in, in taste, but you can also, it has a mild to medium hop aroma. So we could, we could do that as well. Yeah. So, and, and also the red ale. So there, there's so many different ways we can go that uh, I think it'd be cool for this, the stream to check it out. Absolutely. So take a look at it. So we're talking about amber ale. Yep. It's going to be a little more, a little more mild. It's going to be on the sweeter side. Right. Right. Uh, red ale. We, we, that's the one we have not discussed. Yeah, we have. I feel like red ale is good as a branding play. Yeah. For I red think large, it's really but cool. but you tell me. Like, go ahead and go into red ales for them. Re I mean, red ale is is pretty much the malt build. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot like the Velvet Cape, where we're not using a ton of hops. Okay. But you're going to get that nice, juicy, malty characteristic to it. Mm -hmm. Um that's probably going to warm you throughout a cold winter. There we go. March. So that's on the mild side there too. Yeah. It's not, it, it, it is not Hopfest 1482. Well, yeah, no, exactly. Right. But we, and, and, but you know, we, we can play around. We can experiment. Well, we, I gotta, could, we could make a red ale that also incorporates a high level of hops. Right, right. So, so the main thing we have to consider there is I need to get, next time I'm describing the Drawn and Courtier, I need to get some hops because she's just, she's a very practical woman. She would have them growing, right? She'd have hops all over. So I'll, I'll say there's, I'll say there's an arbor. <clears throat> like around the door, she's probably got some old vines. <laughs> exactly. Right? Great Jedi Trevor, thanks so much. So what about, so let's see. It seems like people like the red ale, and I think that the branding. I love it. The branding sort of, um, you know, precedes itself, right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh man, but already, Already, the aroma back here is getting wild. It's starting to smell good. Neuro Jedi, there's two Jedi in a row. Kicking in that prime sub, thank you so much. But no, it's just a warm cereal. It's like, um, like, like December, let's say, 8th, like Malto meal. Exactly. Like you come in and this is, and this is what you smell. Like this is what, this is what your parents made for you. <laughs> <laughs> Millennial, thank you so much. All right, hey, All right. so, so, where, so, so let's go with the red ale. No, red ale happened. I mean, that happened, okay? <clears throat> That's over. Now, so you, as you have said, grain bill is a big part of the red profile. So what are you throwing in there that gives you a red color? I mean, I know about the SRM shit right. up and down that. Where, 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 okay, where, so where do we get that, that red color? It's not traditionally, you're not, it's not going to come out looking like the color red. No, no, no. It just no. means it's a darker, but it's, it's darker, darker mill. But it's it, but it is malty. Right. Um, and it's in that sort of orange continuum. So let me pull this. Uh, there we go. Could also do a red IPA. <laughs> Weird. Yep. I've never tried one of those. Me either. Me either. But we have our black IPA. We got a good drinkable one in the back. God, it smells like ah. Now, look, look at look at the water above and below. Oh yeah, the look at bed. this. Look at look, look, look at where it's hitting here. But look oh, at, thanks, Josh. Look at look at the color gradient of the sugars coming. Like it's the just water draining straight the down. Grain. This was that color. Yeah. Five minutes ago. Exactly. Right. Oh. Precious grains. Do your work. Do your dark work. Okay, so a <clears throat> red. Um, 
ale is going to, the base malts, we talk about base malts. Exactly. Being it's, the, the, it's the highest volume. Yeah, the highest volume. It's going to give us the most sugars. Right. For these, we for a red um, ale, we usually use predominantly Munich and Vienna malts. Okay. Now, we, we, had, not, we had not leveraged Vienna in the past, but we had considered Vienna. We had considered so it. So tell me more about the Vienna flavor so profile. Let's, let's check it out. It's pretty... It's pretty delicious. Um, once again, oh, no, that's victory. Um, it's going to give the same, essentially, here's what's going to happen. Vienna's going to give the same kind of flavor profile as a Munich, mm -hmm. but it, it imparts a different color. It imparts an orange color to the, to the beer itself. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then the, <clears throat> and then the, uh, the Munich, what's yep. the flavor profile there? Munich, um, hold on one second, let me pull that up. Um, this is what's going to give us that very delicious, sweet caramel flavor. This is a little more ambery in color. Uh, so, we can use a base of, we can either do predominantly Munich. Or, or, or predominantly Vienna. Or predominantly Vienna, or, or we can use, actually have a mix where we make it, you know, well, we can, we can pick which one we want to be the dominant. Yeah, them. yeah. Or we can do a blend. Yeah. Well, we will probably eventually blend it. We'll just see which one the which one, chat wants oh, to Oh, which use. one leads. What, what, like, what, what's our foot forward? Yeah, exactly. On this, right? <clears throat> Vienna's going to be a little bit crisper and cleaner than the Munich. Munich's gonna, Munich oh, is a little more caramel, a little in more terms, In terms of in the body. mouth. Yeah. In terms of the mouth yeah. feel. Yep. Man, you know what would be amazing? I would love... So once we get this thing kicked... So, can you describe for the channel? I probably could do it, but I would fuck it up, I'm sure. Um, describe for the channel the difference between a cask ale sure. and then like a traditionally served ale that you would get, you know, like the typical thing that's going to come out of the tap. Okay, so... When, I, I, I kept talking about cask temp yes. when it came to this. So this is the sort of thing I'm getting at. So, ales used to be served at cellaring temperature which meant it was literally in the cellar, and that was the temperature, which is usually around 55 degrees in right. a normal cellar. Not ice cold. Not ice cold. Right. So that's how cask ales are served, still in the cask. And what you'll see at when you go to a bar and they say they have cask beer on tap, that means they have a well, line. Well, two things. First of all, get it. Yes, one, get, just buy it. Yeah. And because don't you worry about... You want to support that. And don't that's, worry. Again, we're talking about heritage. Yeah. And don't worry about the temperature. It's a little warm, but that's how it's it, supposed to be served. So yeah, so it, basically it's going to be more foamy. Right. Uh, a little bit on the top, but it's a different type of foam than you'd get out of this. Because generally speaking, it's not, like it's carbonated by the pull of the lever. Exactly. There's what's called a beer engine. It's and mild. You'll, you'll see these amazing taps that move, the whole tap moves as you pump. So you're pumping, this beer engine is pumping the ale from the cask in the cellar up to the tap. And right. while it's doing that, that's what actually provides the carbonation. Because the beer is has fermented in this cask with no adjuncts it's in it. It's a traditional... It's, it's fermenting in its own yes. juices, Exactly, exactly right. And so the reason, uh, the reason I brought it up specifically is because, you know, when I was in uh, Scotland a while ago, they had... Um, you'd go to a place and they might have other taps, they mm -hmm. might have other beers, but they would not advertise them. They would only advertise what they called real, real ales. ales. Yeah, and that's what it was. Right? It's like they might have 10 taps, but they don't tell you that. Yeah. They say how many real ales they have. Yeah. And that real ale continuum is a, is a cultural practice. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's becoming more and more popular here in the States, too. Yeah. Um, I love it. Among, we always get yeah, it. Our like, nerds, on our you know, On our writing process, like, um, there's a few really solid offerings that they have right. over it there. And then, so, so you, might, you might consider cask and then your traditional tap and then something like a nitro tap. Mm -hmm. Consider those things sort of in a range of textures. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yep. I think it looks like the Munich's got it. Oh, yeah. Munich's, Munich is running away with the game here. So, but that's, that's good. That's, that's good. good. But we can get some Vienna in there Just to, give to it a impart little. a little more of the orange color. Yep, absolutely. Right? There so, much Munich I can spell. Here, so, so get, yeah, get, get those bad boys in there and then um, come after it on the back end with the Vienna for the mix. Oh, look at this. Look at this. 
Look at that it's color. Up to the top. Look at that color. Oh. Velvet cape. Oh, and I was oh that smell. So I was talking to I was talking to Lydia a little bit mm -hmm. about glassware. Oh, um, and, cool. And she was sort of talking about the um because she's just such a fucking sorceress. Um she's sort of talking about like the different ways you can get that made and put together. Yeah. Um but I'd love to see some AI like some AI glassware like is like is that's end game for me. Like yeah, that's, that's, yeah, definitely. It seems like that's how it's got to be. I mean, I mean, this one um, was this little clues that did this. I, I don't remember exactly who it came through. I don't think it was clues. It wasn't clues. Okay, what? Well, whoever did these, just pure awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but the main thing is, is that if you have the right glassware, and it has the right logo on it, it tastes better. And yeah. This is scientific. Scientific fact. It's like when you paint your minis when doing war gaming, you're gonna win it, well, against an unpainted army. Exactly. And obviously, red ones go faster. Everybody knows this. Scientific have... fact. What's that? Have either of you tried beer through crystal? Because I know that's good for wine. Crystal? Crystal glasses? Um, there are definitely, I mean, there are definitely approaches to that. I have some sort of cylinders that are supposed to improve it, mm -hmm. uh -huh. especially with nose. And then um, there's also like tulip is sort of the classic, especially for high ABV brews. Right. Um, so, so what do we think here? So you're, you're going to throw in some Vienna there on the back? Mm-hmm. So... We have, there's, here's the second choice. We want to make sure we get some good head retention on this beer. You know, when I... Tell me about that. So, when I think about going to a pub, an old tavern, I think about a frothy head, a frothy mug of beer. Oh, right? I see. So you're, so you're thinking about it all the way down to the experience of having one. Mm -hmm. Nice. So what allows us to do that are our, remember we talked before on our other shows, or other episodes was the crystal malts, the caram malts, they all do that. Um, so oh, they have that in there, and why is that? Is um, it just the It's the sugars the that are character. imparted out of, yeah, the characters are the sugars. So we have two that we can, um, that would be really oh, neat to go with. Josh, you don't have to show me rubbing, listen, sometimes I have to rub the grains. I want to know that, I want these individual grains to know that they are well loved. You don't have to. Sh That's what they want to see. All right. I'm gonna try not to do it, but I can't make any promises. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You understand? This is a part of the process. It's like how, it's like how you know, top tier award-winning gardeners sing to their pumpkins. It's how it works. Sung to pumpkins become more bulbous. They have richer flavor. You got to think of a better '80s song this week. Maybe. Yeah, Devo, maybe. I don't know. I wanna know what love is. All right, so, no, listen. Let's jump back in there. All right. Yeah. So let's let's think of two types of Kara crystals that we could use. One, the first one will be a Kara pills. We haven't used this grain yet. Tell me more. Kara pills. It's going to impart the you know that uh, caramel color that we want, but it's also going to be very crisp because it's a Pilsner malt. Interesting. Right. So okay. it's going to it's going to make us make this beer a little more crisp. So that's the Kara pills. Yep. Or we could do another mix of crystals, which is going to give us a little more caramel, a, a, a deeper caramel taste, a deeper caramel cover, uh, color. Yep. So do we want it a, a lighter and crisper of a beer, or do we want it a little more caramel? A, yeah, a little more, a little more broad. Yeah. Right? And what, Carapils is the crisp, and what was the second one? Uh, well, we can do Crystal 80. Crystal. All right, let us know. Jump in there. Uh, let us know which one of these is gonna jump in on the back. Like, the fact of the matter is. Decisions I know, like, it's great. You know, there, was a, there was a period of time where people wanted Charles in charge of them. Like, I want this channel to make decisions for me and my life. Yeah. Because right now, they're batting a thousand. Like, I know, they're doing like if that? You start, if you start with the war priest, It's not even carbonated, and it's room fucking temperature. Yeah. And it is incredible. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's true. What, man? That it's warm. 
Oh yeah. And not carbonated. No I man, when this is <laughs> when this good. think about this. When this is ready to go, like there is not a single off flavor. It is just perfect. Delish. Yeah. All right. So it looks it looks like people are looking for that bigger, that broader. Wow, yeah, that's cool. That broader mouthfeel. Yeah. I, obviously I support that. Oh no, no. It looks like Kara Pills is running away with the game. Yeah. And, and I get that too. I mean, I think that they're both legit. Um, yeah, it's it's a great flavor. It's 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 fantastic. It's going to do a lot for the malt build. Um, it's going to give us a lot of. It's going to give us that frothy head that we want. Um, bo both yeah, of yeah, these are really good choices. But wouldn't it be fun? So the reason I brought up cask, uh, Gundam Squirrel. Thank you so much. The reason I brought up cask mm. is because it would be so fun. Like it's one thing to make it, and then obviously we'll we'll get wild on it. Mm -hmm. We'll make it. We'll get wild on it. But wouldn't it be fun to do a cask of it? Yeah, I have a cask. Well, at I, home. I know. I'm saying like make it like do it in the do it in the yeah. the brew way here. We'll come through. We'll get wild. But what if we did that one instead of doing it in the traditional way that we've been doing it? What if we did? Yeah, we uh, aged it in what a if cask we did? Barrel. What if we did hers in a cask? Yeah. So that it's like pulling it out. Yep. Um, it's like pulling it out from uh, the drawn and quarter. Drawn and quarter. We could absolutely do that. Right. We could make this a cast beer. Exactly. But that's why I like investigating the. That's why I like investigating the artifact potential. Right. Right. It's like I want to. I want to take those things out of. I want to take those things out of head cannon. Yeah. And just sort of like Bring make them. that something that you can actually have. Right. Like I really want. I, to be honest, I really want to make a beer for the the spider we created that was hanging on the chandelier. Oh, like that, that spider needs a, a cocktail or something. <laughs> that would be nice. That would be nice. Um, well, yeah, I feel very confident that we're good on Kara Pills here. I think Kara Pills, uh, one hundred percent right. success here. Let's see what happens when we add about Kara Pill. Mm-hmm. Good old breeze. Let's see. What, we'll give it a pound. Oh, let's drop that down. A little wild. It's a little high, a little, little much. We don't yeah, get a yeah. pound of it. Yeah, and it has to be something that she can. It has to be something that she can make, on the regular. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, just so we, just so we know too, with these Irish reds, they're not high ABV beers. Well, no. Typically speaking, they're a lot usually of those, around four to five percent. Yeah, yeah. These are these are, um, these are beverages of broad application. Right. right? Exactly. You want to be serving a lot of them in the bar. Exactly. Now, let's let's think. We need to darken this beer up a little. If you guys can see on the scale over there, the color. Yeah, we're still, we got a little bit of orange there at the bottom. So we're just hitting the spectrum for a red ale. Right, right, right. And right. So we want to get something else in there. Yep. To amp up the. And it's not going to be a lot. It's just going to be a little. No, no. We want some. We want color. Yeah. So let's look at our special malts. We have a special B. Which is really oh. cool. It's a Belgian no, malt. We had we, exactly. I mean, we had discussed this before, but yeah. it didn't make the cut. This is going to give some extreme caramel flavor to this to this uh, this beer. Um, it's going to impart that Belgian aroma that we normally think of when we have Trappist ales. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get color and caramel, uh, a really really heavy caramel flavor, guys. If we want to use that special B malt. But okay. the other way is to go with a special roast. This is used in oh, English. Oh, there we go. This is used in English beers. Um, it's going to impo import a more nutty flavor than uh, a, a caramel flavor. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah. But but it'll also give us the color we want. Yeah. Uh, Ruku, uh, yeah, Carafa 3, we use that actually in the... Um, the priest? Uh... War Priest, I believe it was, yeah. yeah. So that's the, cho I would say, you know, you have a, a extremely caramel choice or a, a nutty choice to go with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Both winners for me. Both winners for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so this is this is 100%. Yeah, look at the color change that is already. Not the, that is not what we were doing before. No. This is not the same. It was super light before. It was very low on, on the SRM scale, and yeah. now that it's going through this process. That is not the same at all. And, so, and then so where does it get? Because you've, you've actually run this whole mm -hmm. process before. Where does it get color-wise I mean, from here? like. Oh, it's, it's going to get a little darker. Really? A little darker. Probably two or three more shades of... 
caramel mm -hmm. <laughs> of amber. But yeah, but it's, it's in exactly the right spot. And then the, uh, obviously the aroma just from the grains is out of control. Oh yeah, I, can, yeah, I, I cannot wait. After the, the, the trial brew and this one, I can't. I cannot wait. It smells so no. so good. No, 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 like at, I say, in so the fermenter. and so and you're gonna pull. So here in a few days, you'll be able to pull some of that and do a taste. I don't. It doesn't make any fucking sense. If I went to again, if I went somewhere and they gave me this, I would tell my friends that we were coming back there. Like yeah. it's that. It's not a. I'm not euphemizing it. Yeah. Like, this is actually. This is incredibly well balanced. Yeah. I. I I cannot wait to carbonate that beer. Mm. Mm. It's delish. It is. Now, I feel I feel like special roast is running away, but I'm going to give it another few seconds. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's cool. Yeah, I, I think they want that. I think the big thing for them is they want to start tuning that color. Yeah. Well, and, and, and to be honest, we, we should be looking at this uh, special bee and special grain more as a taste. Because we can always crank up the color with either with one. With a of very them. small addition, even of something that's dark. Yeah, the special B is gonna make it a lot darker, whereas the special uh, roast is gonna give us more amber of a color. Mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. redder, redder. Exactly, color. we're moving in the right direction. Yep. I like that. And of course, of course, the channel is just on brand. They wanna make sure that this red large beer yeah. is hitting what it should. So special roast it is. Let's go with some special roast. It's special roast. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, okay. now we're moving in the right direction. Ooh, ooh, look at that. Oh. All right, so do we want to make, so this is a, a great, great grain bill already. Agreed. We are right at, a, right at 5% ABV. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's exactly right for the Drawn and Courtier. Right. You're gonna sell a couple of these. Yeah, well, right? people, people can drink all night off of this, right? Exactly. Scuba Steve Jesus. Esquire. Godspeed. May I Man. suggest? Oh, <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. So, so please continue. So, do we want to let's talk about the color? Do we want to make it a little more red, or do we want to lighten it up? Okay. Right now, we're so the SRM scale for this is between nine and fourteen. Right now, we're at twelve point six, so we're at the higher end of the scale. I mean, we can, we can, we don't have to stay inside this scale either, guys. No. We can totally blow this out of the water. Like, check this out. <laughs> we, we can make it as dark as we want. We definitely don't want that. So, so right now we're talking about just a little bit of tuning on the SRM, right? Right. So do we want to be at, we're at 12.6 now. Do we want to go a little bit darker or a little bit lighter? Yeah, so, so we're talking about uh, darker, lighter? Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Yeah, I mean, right now, I think based on that, ah, uh, so it's, it's pulling it out. Yeah, check it out. It is bringing the water right out of, right off the top. All that great color is going down in here and it's just tossing it right out into the tank. And actually take a look at the War Priest. You can see now that some of that, those proteins have, and trub is filtered down to the bottom, it's getting darker. It is, yeah, again, like I, I was surprised. Like I, I thought for sure that I had the, the color on that conceptually correct, mm -hmm. but no, it's as the particulate falls out, it's getting darker, not lighter. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's wild. What a incredible, man, darker, lighter is definitely a-, a Wow, yeah, a, this is neck and neck. Darker, I like light, darker and lighter is a fist fight in prof there. Prof is a cleric, shouldn't it be lighter? <laughs> That's, uh, hey, you know. But, but again, this is what we're talking about. Now, this prof, is how but, cool this is. This exactly. is how cool. For me, this what's so amazing is we're taking these characters, these characters we've created, mm -hmm, characters mm -hmm. that we've known for decades, and now we're right making a recipe. So with Profa everybody. is a paladin, if that is if that matters at all. Something to consider. Oh man, it's still neck and neck. This is great. Yeah. Lighter, I, I think lighter may run away with this. We, yeah, second. you know what? We actually should have put one that said kept it the, keep it the same. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we won't go much lighter than yeah. that because it's decent right now. Slight <clears throat> sobriety. <laughs> no. There we go. All right. Well, listen, that's... Oh, man, darker is getting healthy. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Something to consider. 39. All right, I'm gonna let this go for I'm gonna let this go for Look 20 at this. or 30 more seconds. 48 to I know. 50 no, water. No, no, Are you no. kidding me? I know, exactly. Now it just keeps creeping. 
Listen, it could be it could be that darker is going to win because lighter is not going anywhere and darker is moving up. Oh, up there. Whew. Oh, see now now people are coming out of the sidelines. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, now you're going to that vote. Now you're going to commit. You got to rock the vote. Rock so here, the vote. Exactly. So 1996. Let's say 15 more seconds or so. Oh shit! What? Ooh, oh no! Is the camera? What? Oh, no. <laughs> oh my God! The votes are coming, dude. They're just going back and forth. The votes are coming. <laughs> All right, I'm not even Holy gonna look. Holy shit! The, uh, they're they are still coming. I'm not even in. gonna look. I'm not even gonna look here. I'm gonna go like this. <laughs> Professor Monkey Three. <laughs> I'm gonna hit it right. I'm gonna hit it in five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. What do we got? Oh, oh, oh. oh darker. darker gets it. Darker oh. rolled through. Now. So, but, but again, we don't want to go too much darker. No, 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 maybe, what's... We're just going to tune it a little bit, Doink. right? So let's show them that color How about we that? Can. There we go. Now, now we've got the classic red uh, look, the profile in the glass. You can see right through. Right, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be pretty. Exactly. All right, now, so when we're, when we're approaching something like this from a hop direction, mm -hmm. um, again, so the stuff that we've done so far has sort of been on two ends of the scale. The black IPA needs a bunch right. to go crazy on, right? It needs something to back, it needs something to fight off that malt. Right. When we're talking about this, it's mostly something to help, to help, they collaborate with the malt. It's a diff totally different situation. Exactly. This is somewhere in the middle. Right. And that's, and this middle space is something I don't actually know very much about, because I, I tend to cleave to the extremes on beverages. Right. Um... Let me see what we could go with with this now that we've... Oh, let's look at our bittering hops. Oh, excellent. Um, we've got a couple really cool bittering hops that we could use. Yeah, yeah. And it should be novel. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right, I, I mean, it, it should be... It should feel sort of like local and artisanal. Like, there should be some novel choices in there, I think. Right. Um, one of the first we could talk about, which we haven't, I don't think, talked about yet, is Centennial. Yeah, which is a classic. This is a classic hop that is grown all over. Um, it's florally, it's citrus, as you guys can see. It's going to give us a little bit of spicy, but it's a clean, bittering flavor. All, all of which you guys can see on here. Um... This is a fantastic, fantastic, classic bittering hop. Mm -hmm. um, so that would come in early on. This would be and our hang out. This would be our sixty-minute bitter. Right. Um, now, we could also go with um, Brewer's Gold, which is interesting. Um, oh, oh, I forgot about this one. What? Well, so, uh, I just want to make sure. Are you getting excited about a hop? Yeah. Is that what I saw I'm, with the clap? Yeah, I'm super excited about hops. I love hops. Yeah, the hops I have on the fence are starting to look real good. We should pull those. We should pull those and make something and out put, of it. And stuff them into that hop tray. One of the hops that I love um, is mosaic. Well, yeah. And mosaic can be used for both bittering and aroma. So we, so a concept that we could do with this, I don't know how, I don't even know how it would play in Well, first a, of all, give me the notes. Um, you're going to get, uh, oh, it's like Simcoe, right? It's yeah. a, um, let me check what the notes on Simcoe are. Rest. Rest, my grains. I'm trying not to touch it. I can't not do it. Yeah, so Simcoe is like citrus and pine. Oh, there we and go. It's gonna be resin. Resin. It's gonna, yeah, it's dank. All right? It's gonna be dank. So we could, which would be kind of neat, and we haven't done this yet, and I'm a fan of it, is a single hopped. <clears throat> no, um, I like it too. A single hopped beer. You know, a lot of people, you know, everybody thinks, oh, we need to have all these. You know, five mm. different hops in a beer to make it no. really great. The best, the best beer I have ever had in my life mm -hmm. was a fresh hop mosaic beer. Yeah, that was just mosaic uh, IPA at every point 
right. of hop addition. Right. And the reason I like this is that I feel like it makes sense narratively as well. Mm -hmm. Because you wouldn't have you know, access to a ton you, of different You're not going to have access to a ton of different hops. And it's also, I, I just feel very strongly mm -hmm. that Profa is just going to have some hops over here. She's going to be putting this back on the stove. She's going to be mixing the wort with a big paddle. Yep. She's going to be serving out here, but then every now and then she just goes and puts in hops. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be the same bowl. Yeah. Right? Right. So I would say, let's think about this as a single hopped ale, red ale that we're doing. But the last one I would talk about is Cas uh, Cascade. Yeah, yeah. Which is a, a very traditional hop to use. Um, but this is going to give us some different uh, flavors or aromas. It's going to be spicy, but it's going to be floral and have a little bit of grapefruit in there. Well, here. Which so, I think is pretty neat. Like, <coughs> well, here, a, a floral flavor to this could be really, really fun. Yeah, it sounds good. So the main thing, I'm just going to put that concept out to him right now. Okay. I'm just going to say, hey. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. Do we want to do, do something where, you know, we roll in... And you know she's gone out like maybe out by the carriage house, right? Just like on the like on the fence that she's yeah. got back there. She has it on the vine. It could she, be she's got she grabs a bunch of them. It could be vining up the DNC. You know, yeah, what I mean? exactly. How cool it, of a picture no, it is should that, be, right? It should, it should be coming around. Yeah, but it's like there's so many of them that she's like pissed. <laughs> yeah, it's like she needs them, but she, they're also yeah. like unruly. Yeah. And the other thing about hop vines is that if you let them go, mm -hmm. they actually get very sticky. Yeah. And so the next year, when the rhizome is kicking out the new creepers, it crawls around last year's growth. Yeah. Yeah, they're wild. I mean, they, they grow quick, too. Yeah. Uh, so I feel, like, I feel like it was worth putting that call out. Like before I did, think that's great. I think this is, I mean, what are, once before again. We did, before we did anything else. But it's just these fucking pros, yeah. right? Just premium. Yeah, I, I think we got single hop red ale. I think I think is is the winner. No, multi hop is not going to win that. No matter how long I leave this up, it just ain't going to come through. So, uh, so let's talk about. <laughs> I love that the Amber Council. That's amazing. Now I think we coined that one. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's talk about it. Um, so let's let's think about mosaic. Okay, let's think about mosaic. It's the and ones it, exactly. It's the ones that she has got. Mm -hmm. Um, they're sort of growing even around the door. Yep. Every now and then she's got to cut them. Right. Like they start cribbing in the window and she's like pushing them out and then closing the window. Right, right, right. Right? Because so, they will. They will try to get into your oh, house. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They'll, they'll creep on you. They, they, they will feed you Seymour. Yeah, exactly. Now. Haha, <laughs> yes. Walnut will use plant growth to, to encourage the hops that we need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but that's one of the exciting things for me is to think about what happens next year during Last Stones Day. Yeah. Like all the festivals and stuff that we've come up with, like how do they, can, like when the sequel comes through. Right. And how do we change that? How do we change what's the, the new, game what's, around? What's the beer for the year? What's the what? new challenge? Yeah. Right? Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, here, so we got mosaic. So we have mosaic. Um, which is uh, citrus. Yep, you're going to get a lot of citrus and pine. Mm -hmm. And Cascade. Cascade is, a, once again, another really great hop, guys. You can see the, the, the flavor profile. Or you can, <coughs> I don't think you actually can see the flavor. Can you? It still thinks it's mosaic. Oh, it still thinks it's mosaic. Hold on. We need a... But it's going to be floral and spicy. Interesting. Yeah. Come on. Give me that flavor. Yeah. It's going to be floral, spicy, with a little bit of grapefruit. Oh, see, and that's the distinction, right? You got yeah. citrus, but then grapefruit, grapefruit is bitter citrus. Right. right. So that's a whole different ball game when we look at when we look at these two different kinds of hops. Yep. Um, I love Cascade. I love Mosaic. They're both absolutely fantastic. So it's really what direction do we want to go with exactly. this Exactly. You know, and and again, you know, approach this, approach this like we would. Think of it in a story context. Yeah. Right. Um, Think about think about what's growing out there, mm -hmm. um, and then also think about think about Profa, like the tough old lady that runs the drum right. courtier, hyper pragmatic. Right. Um, but is is this a case? Is this a case? Is this like an extravagance that she allows herself? Right. <laughs> I agree. I agree. 
The, yeah, yeah. Does it get out of um, the general range? Would she put mosaic in there just because it's exactly you know not normal? Exactly. Or does she trade with someone to right. get it? Right. Right. Oh, precious grains. But if it, and oh, if the fucking grain cam's on, I can't, <laughs> I need to look over at the grain <laughs> cam so that I can because yeah. I, I want because this is you have to understand, Josh. This is an intimate moment. Like I don't. It's private. Like what I share with these grains, it's personal. Is it? Yes. I mean, should the, the world see it? No. No, it no, 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 no. That's my shame. So here, so we're gonna do about twenty more seconds. Yeah. I, it, well, what's cool about this is we're once again. I love that this is neck and neck because they're cool choices. They're really there's, cool there's choices. There's no, there's no loss. No. And what's really great, like say uh, Cascade makes it and Mosaic doesn't, we can take Mosaic and do an IPA with it. Exactly. Some of, some of my favorite IPAs are the are single hop mosaics. Um, exactly. Lucky Brewing. Oh yeah, totally has right. A and so it's like you mosaic. start at the beginning, and then you use the same taste, but because of the differences of when it's added to boil, mm -hmm. it's a completely different experience. Exactly. Right. All right. Well, man, I think that Cascade. Boom. I mean, it seems like Cascade is sort of run away with it here. Uh, Yep, I like what I'm seeing there. So Whoa. Cascade, okay. floral, spicy, bitter citrus. But I think that's also appropriate, like, you I, want, in the, in the fantasy, like, sort of context, like, you yeah. want it to taste a little bit different. Like, yeah. you want to, you want to, like, experience something that's a little bit, yeah. like, unique and distinct. Yeah, and I think it's a really great, um, I think Cascade, guys, is a really great choice for a red ale. Because mm -hmm. um, it's not going to be overpowering in, in, a, in a sense. It's going to add the right... Um, flavoring to those malts that we chose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, so um, I feel like we got our hop. Uh, we're going to do a single hop all the way through. We got a, a, a premium, exquisite uh, custom grain bill mm -hmm. uh, collaborated on with the channel, obviously. Um, here, so let me ask you a few questions, um, and then it'll be time uh, to kick the stream over to Mike for his art. Is that right, Josh? Maybe. Our stuff, maybe? Let's consider I it. I don't know if he's uh, ready or not. Oh, no. I, I, you get a hold of him. Yeah. I'll answer a couple questions. Yeah. So, um, Angus McDonald wants to get Angus. a chance to uh, buy six packs of them, shelf life and shipping weight nightmares. Have we considered setting up Pico packs on their brew marketplace? So, I actually got a tweet from Annie. Oh, really? Over at uh, Pico Brew. The uh, the place that makes this device. Did she make fun of us and saying like no, you guys are idiots? She was and... so cool. She said to get a hold of her personally and we could talk about stuff. Oh right. Really? So I would love to put these recipes up as packs that you can order at home. Yeah. And then build. I, I, I think that is an awesome idea. Um, what's the best brew to bring to a PTA potluck? <laughs> I think for a PTA. Oh, thanks, man. Oh, cookie I love boys. The cookie boys. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Hey. So uh, that's, that's what I would say. Oh yeah, thank you so much. So th this is what I would say. Um, for a PTA potluck, I would definitely move in sort of that amber direction. Cause you, Cause you can go wrong with that too. I have an actual experience with this, not with the PTA, Yeah. but back when I started brewing, um, it was in college and my, one of my friends had a um, graduated college, he had a graduation party. Yeah. And it was at this really cool outdoor area and pavilion and all this stuff. And I brewed a beer for it. And oh, it, nice. it was a raspberry um, pale ale. Sure. Right? I brought five gallons, and I, I got his Damn. grandmother wasted. Yeah, with because, home brews. Because she was like, I've never had a beer so good. Because it was just raspberry, like the raspberry flavor. So Yeah, if, the nose. Yeah, Especially it, if I have a raspberry. It's a very entry-level beer because it has... A fruity characteristic but and it doesn't it's, taste it's, like beer right so to speak right so if i was going to brew something for the pta i would do a raspberry pale ale just because everybody it everybody's going to love it unless you're a beer snob and you know they might think it's something uh, else it's something else exactly exactly i think i think you'd be hard pressed not to like war priest yeah um now i got a few more questions in here uh, bob the ninja goldfish wants us wants to know if it's possible not to give viari his own brew until pat gives us the book uh, we could work. I could. I could talk to him about that. We'll see how it goes. Now, yeah. uh, he also wants to know. We haven't used a whole bag of the hops yet. What's the best way to store hops? Um, the best way to store hops is if you have a vacuum sealer, seal them That's up in the a vacuum. Way. Yeah, you want to get as much oxygen off these things as possible. 
because they will oxygenate off over time and you, lose their As acidity. we've discussed, right, fragile. Um, let's see, oh, little clues. Little <laughs> clues. Shit. Clues wants, <laughs> clues wants a 24 seven fermentation live cam. Uh, that clear, would be funny. Clearer brown bottles. You know, I brown like, bottles. I like brown. Nope. There, there's actually a reason. Oh, it's, it, oxid it, it's, it's the solar light, right? The, the light will come in and ruin your beer. Um, if you've ever had Heineken and wonder why it's skunky, it's because it's in green beer and lights hit it. What? Yeah. I thought that was a part of the thing. No, because it's, it's, it's been skunked. That's what skunks your beer is the light. Oh. So brown bottles all the way. Um, when you're fermenting, when we put this down in the cellar, we're going to cover it with a black t-shirt so no light gets in, mm -hmm. into the beer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, let's see, normal top or those fun flip top easy ones? Both are really cool. Both I are have fun. No, yeah. Both, Both are, are classic. Totally I, I didn't fun. use the flip tops for um, kombucha. The, the flip tops are just fun and it's a really cool bottle to present. I use those when I'm giving a beer away to friends. Totally, totally. And Because then... It's novel enough, yeah. but they don't throw it away either. Yeah. And there's a much better chance of you, you getting, getting a novel back. bottle back. <laughs> um, let's see. So, uh, uh, Estrusian wants to know if we've ever had any Belgian or Dutch Bach brews. Oh, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I've brewed if, if a so, ton which, of Bach. So, which ones did you love? Um, I've had tons. I've had tons. Um, that's just something I order by name. Right? Think that style is not super common here no no you can get them you can get them uh, like delirium tremens is my yeah. one of my favorites delirium nocturnum is delicious mm -hmm. um la fin de moon is oh yeah fantastic that's good stuff i mean just have one and you'll be you're gonna be good uh, any chance of bringing some of this to pax unplugged this november uh, i'm trying to figure out how beer can travel states states each have different rules because of prohibition, like sometimes there's still weird ass laws. I will not say you can send your beer through FedEx. But it does happen. But it happens on occasion. Yeah. But we could, one thing we could do is a beer meetup. Yes. Um, where every, I mean, you could, I've packed bottles on the plane and just put them underneath, you know, yeah. the plane. We could pack bottles of War Priest or JDA's Cape or right. anything we make, and we could have a beer meetup one night and just exchange bottles with people. That'd be kind of fun. True. That'd be a good party. Yeah. Uh, that'd be a good party. Well, here, listen. I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna do one more question, and then, of course, I have this list of questions. We'll be chewing through these uh, each time we go. It's just that we kept having fun. Yeah. Do you and wanna just answer them when you go over there? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I can bring this, I can bring this with me over to the other side. Yeah. Uh, that's a great idea. Um, well, here, yeah, yeah, so, uh, Precious Channel. Uh, what a pleasure it's been. Pax Acqu Bottle Exchange. Erica. Exactly, yeah. exactly, but Acquisitions Intoxicated. What a fun show. Thanks for, thanks for showing up.